Hi and welcome to the highlights of the XRL European Super League. It's round three, it should be a great week. Here are the highlights from all of the games, including our main match commentary between VFL Wolfsburg and Real Sociedad. We also have highlights from all of the other games in the XRL Europe Super League, including how table toppers AS Roma got on against Inter Milan at the San Siro, and whether Galatasaray could keep pace at the top of the table against Valencia. But first to our main commentary of the day between VFL Wolfsburg and Real Sociedad. Wolfsburg picking up a fine win against Porto in round two, while Sociedad are still awaiting their first win. Off to our commentators, and Alan Smith and Martin Tyler. Rituza. It'll be the goalkeeper's ball now. Gonzalo Castro. In with a chance. It might be needed again, the goalkeeper. This is certainly going to be within their range now that the free kick has been given. Keep an eye on those defenders because they shouldn't be allowed to move in the wall. The player is going to pay a price for trying to get too close to the ball. Yeah, he tried to get away with it, but he hasn't. Players in the wall anticipating the height of the free kick and blocking it. De La Bella. He's coming forward with some danger. Canales. Goes for goal! And the goalkeeper opting to hang on. He hangs on well. In a goal, here's the chance. Safe hands from the keeper from that position. Carlos Vela. Sergio Canales. Well, it is a free kick. And uh, they're excited by this. It's a real chance to at least work the goalkeeper. He's been pumped up for some time, this player, and he's gone in there when he really got very little chance of getting the ball, and he's all over the man. Yeah, his teammates really needed to call him down because you're right, Martin, he had lost his composure in the, in the ten minutes leading up to that challenge. That ball is definitely on the move, and it shouldn't be allowed to do that. The referee's had enough of this. Out comes the card. From the free kick. Don't think he could have hit that one much better. Right in quickly to try and win the ball back. It's his speciality is it's a chance. Got to be. A turnover to the opposition because of that poor touch. Well, no shots at all so far for Wolfsburg. Well, you get the feeling we could be here till midnight. In with a chance. And he's got it up and over the goalkeeper, and he's scored! The golf knowledge, that is a fantastic little dink over the keeper. It takes a cool head to execute that. Let's have another peek at that goal. Sebastian Jung. Here's the chance, and they've got the equaliser. Well, he won't have scored too many better than that. He certainly won't have hit too many. Gonzalo Castro. Bella! Well, this is an opportunity. When you concede a free kick in an area like this, you could be in serious trouble. Sometimes we wonder quite how they see situations. How he thought he could make the tackle there, it was very reckless, 
And off he goes. There's a, a rush of blood, to say the least. He can have no complaints with that decision. It's very good defending by the... And that's a very good save following the corner. Sergio Canales. Crosses in. Very straightforward for the goalkeeper. Granero. Castro. Vela! And a goal! Carlos Vela can have it back. What a chance here. It's a penalty here. The referee has to reach for the red card. It was a goal scoring opportunity, a clear one. Yeah, he's had one or two awkward decisions in this match, Martin, but not that. That's clear as day. These days, going off your feet like that is running the risk of the referee taking serious action. Yeah, he might have done a bit more damage to his opponent than seems to have been the case. Carlos Martinez. Can go back to the goalkeeper here and does. And the keeper's given the ball away. So the goalkeeper's going to get a chance to show his distribution now. It's going to be his ball. Gonzalo Castro. Here's the chance. Pushed back into play by the goalkeeper. Opportunity here, got to be, and it's a goal. They're rushing to restart the game again because they're just one behind now after that goal. Yeah, maybe not played as well as they would have wanted. Ricardo Rodriguez, possession in the midfield area. Almost lost his balance, but didn't. Great chance, got to be. Taken full advantage with a goal. It's always nice to see a team make use of that advantage by playing football and making use of the extra man. That's the end of the match with the final score 4 2. Right, so that was our main game of the evening. Our extended highlights from VFL Wolfsburg and Real Sociedad. Sociedad claiming a 4 2 win away from home. In the box meet tonight is. Uh, by a Labour user manager, XRL Bobberts. Good evening, and I suppose we better start with some of these penalty decisions. <laughs> I think we best start. I mean, um, I, th I think I'm agreeing with the referee in regards to the third, well, to the third goal. I think it was only the one penalty in the game, or was the two? I'm mistaken. Uh, two there penalties, were two but the penalties. second one I definitely do agree with. Um, the defender completely taking out the attacker. One on, he's about to one on one with the keeper, so that was definitely deserved of a penalty, deserved of a red card being last man, and in the end, well taken by uh, JPS in the end to make it three one at that point. But you disagreed with the first call. That yeah, they had the first red card that Naldo Indeed, received. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe that. Well, looking at that set a couple of times actually, I believe Naldo actually won the ball first before the player rolling over him. Personally, I think the referee has made a, a, a terrible decision there, actually. And I think um, Kirk Killers and, and uh, with his player, Naldo, they were very unlucky and unfortunate with that decision. So Wolfsburg have had a pretty up-and-down start to their season, losing 4-2, then winning 1-0, and then going back to the first game where they lost quite badly to Roma. Um... Can they take a lot of heart from today's result? I mean, 4-2, yes, but with eight men. That 
Can I take well, part definitely, in that? Yeah, especially that they actually scored when they had eight men on the pitch, and actually they scored when they had ten men on the pitch and took the lead. But, you know, they, it, there could have been a, sh a shock result, actually, in that. Maybe he could have sneaked a draw. You know, when he got that second goal and made it 3-2 with about seven minutes to go, you know, tension could have been building. But I think in the end, you know, three three players down, you know, they've got a lot more of a, uh, the pitch to cover between those players. And I think in the end, uh, Jay Pearson and Sociedad just took full advantage and fully deserved of the win, just, te just generally being cleaner. Yeah, and I suppose we're our saucy dad now, looking for the rest of the season. How do you see them getting on? They've climbed the table thanks to that result, but really, is is that result going to fill them with a lot of hope? I, I wouldn't have thought so. I mean, okay, yeah, it's three points in the bag, pretty comfortably down to some mistakes from both the referee and from uh, from Killers' point of view, but. You know, you can in a way you can still take heart from it. You know, as you said, he's moving up the table now. I think he's what he's within the top four, if I'm not mistaken, um, or around that area. He's at least. just slipped. I think he's just slipped a few places lower thanks to some late uh, uh, wins right. whilst we've been recording this. But we'll get to the league table at the end when we actually have all the results in. But definitely, I, I think I think uh, it's uh, like I said, he can take heart from it. But he could just look further and forward. I mean, his next game, is, if I remember rightly, is actually against me. So that's, you know, not going to be um, an easy game for him. Hopefully I can pick my first win of the season when I play against Jay Pierce after my, uh, let's just say, uh, not lacklustre performances, but rubbish FIFA. <laughs> let's just put it that way. <laughs> well, yes, you can, you've obviously seen the game. You can probably make a, a few notes of it and hopefully... Uh... Stop Raul Sausage Dad for the next game, but looking at the stats, they really did tell something. 18 shots with 16 on target for Sausage Dad with 60% possession, actually, sorry, 59% possession. So a lot of the ball, a great shot accuracy, and only limiting Wolfsburg to four shots over the course of the game. So you could definitely tell the three man advantage for Raul Sausage Dad did tell, and probably the right result. But a bit unlucky for Wolfsburg, but. They should be okay this season, I would have thought. Uh, well, like you said, you know, they've had an up and down season. Firstly, as you said, uh, being thrashed by Roma, uh, eight goals to one, and then obviously bouncing back the uh, the week after, you know, an early goal to get a one nil result against Porto. You know, and the season seemed to be, you know, just kind of kick started them. But I think they're, they're getting like a roller coaster effect here, and obviously they're on another downwards point from this. But they can take heart, as I mentioned, scoring a goal with eight men. You know, getting on the counter attack seems to be. Uh, Wolfsburg's uh, main sort of player. So if he, if if Kills can keep that sort of thing up, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, probably I would expect maybe a mid-table finish come the end. But you know, there's a long way to go yet. Right. So let's have a look at the rest of the games in the XRL Europe Super League. Starting off with our table toppers, AS Roma, as they travel to the San Siro to take on Italian rivals Inter Milan. Our first game comes from San Siro, where table toppers AS Roma go to Inter Milan in search of a third win and to increase their goal difference even further. And it was Roma who had a great start, Kevin Strutman getting through on goal, but a great save from the Inter Milan goalkeeper, Handanovic. As the first half wore on, Inter Milan were finding themselves under increased pressure and gave away a penalty in the first half in the 37th minute. But the strike was saved by Muralem Pjanic. And at the end of the first half, Palacio had a great effort on goal, but it was sadly stopped. The second half started, and early on in the second half, we saw our first goal of the game. Jovino trying to get the ball, but Kevin Stream finds it on the in outside the area and has a great shot that goes into the top-hand corner of the goal and sends AS Roma 1-0 up away from home. Pretty much straight away, though, Inter Milan looked very, very strong. And it was Rodrigo Palacio who made it 1-1 in the 56th minute, just under 10 minutes after conceding that first goal. They got level again. With 15 minutes left of the game, Jovino found himself on goal, found a lovely cross in to Miriam Pjanic, who found his first goal of the season after missing the penalty and sent Roma ahead once more. And that is how it finished here. Roma, three wins in a row.
Our next game comes from the Veltins Arena between two sides who have yet to win either of their opening two fixtures. FC Schalke 04 and Sevilla FC. They have both drawn and lost their opening two fixtures respectively against their respective teams. But it was Schalke, the home side, who had the better start in the game. Hunslar dispossessing, finding Farfan. Sam having a shot which was parried away from Beto but bundled in in the end by Jefferson Farfan to make it 1-0. This is what they deserved in the opening stages as they seemed to have a few shots and had a lot of the ball and could have gone ahead earlier on in the game but after the first 12 minutes Jefferson Farfan put them in the lead and it was just deserved. As the first half wore on, Backer became increasingly more influential in Sevilla's play and had a great shot in the 34th minute, deflected away from a late, late slide tackle from Algo. As the first half progressed and in the final minute of the first half, Huntelot had a great effort on goal, had about an eight-yard shot, no pressure and somehow missed it. As the game wore on, Sevilla got more and more into the game and were dominating the second half and a penalty was awarded in the final minute of the game here. Sevilla's striker going down to attack from Felipe Santana and Santana earning himself a red card. Looking at the replay though, it looks as if Santana wins the ball, hitting it towards the goalkeeper before getting the man and probably shouldn't have got sent off. That was probably the right wrong call from the ref. But a penalty was missed from Backer there, skying it over the bar, but it wasn't to be their game today. Another effort in the final minute was blocked by the Schalke defender and that is how it finished here at the Veltins Arena. 1-0 to the home side Schalke. A clash right at the bottom of the division table now. A relegation dogfight between Bayer Leverkusen and FC Porto. Is the new manager FC Porto will be looking to try and get the new manager effect going in this game? And in the early stages, it was Bayer Leverkusen with a great chance early on. Castro forcing a save out of the Porto keeper, Fabiano. From the resulting corner, Kiesling heading just over after 29 minutes. And it was all Bayer Leverkusen in the early stages towards the... End of the first half, a poor defensive error nearly let in a chance for Porto. In the second half, Leverkusen began where they left off and had a great chance. Sun forcing a save out of Fabiano once more. But then the first goal of the game, a corner going into the box, tried to be cleared. But Alexandro hitting a great shot from just outside the area that was deflected off a defender and looped over the goalkeeper. An unfortunate goal and against the run of play. It was 2-0 right at the end of the game, however. And it was completely against the run of play once more, but it just showed a side that finished all of their chances compared to a side that didn't. And it remained 2-0 at the final whistle to Porto and their first win of the season. Our next game comes from the San Siro between AC Milan and Liverpool, both teams winning their last games. And it was Liverpool who started much the better in the early stages, Lauren forcing a save out of Diego Lopez in the 11th minute. The, the dominance continued with Balotelli striking the post just four minutes later. Liverpool were looking very, very strong in the opening stages, but it was Milan who broke, broke the deadlock and getting against a run of play and taking a 1-0 lead with a great header there from Jeremy Menez. Then the big talking point the first half, a penalty decision going against the way of AC Milan. Balotelli taking the penalty and making it 1-1 with a coolly placed finish on the stroke of half-time. In the second half, and Liverpool's dominance continued. A strike on goal, forcing a great save from the keeper there. From the resulting corner, Coutinho whipped in a great cross to find the header of Balotelli and another save from the keeper. This was all Liverpool in this game and they, out, they had about 15 shots extra than their opponents. Another corner, the corner after that, they hit the post and then head just wide. Dominance was really starting to set in. And in the 86th minute, Balotelli put them ahead. And it should have been much earlier than this, but they took the lead nonetheless with just a few minutes to go, making it feel ever so sweeter. In extra time, though, Balotelli 
twisted inside and out and made his third goal of the game. A hat-trick for him and a fully deserved win for Liverpool away from home. Our penultimate game of our highlights this week comes between Tottenham Hotspur and Napoli live from White Hart Lane. Spurs and Napoli doing well in the division, both on four points after their opening two fixtures and are unbeaten. But it was Tottenham who looked in good form at the start. Lennon finding Eriksen who had a great shot into the top corner of the goal after just 12 minutes sending the Tottenham fans crazy. 1-0 to the Spurs. And it was a great start for them, lifting them up into the higher area of the league table. You see Aaron Lennon throwing a good pass there and a great finish from the Danish international. Later on in the first half, just before half-time, Napoli had a good chance to make it 1-1. A great little through ball chip, just missing, but a shot that was blazed over from just outside the area on the first-time shot. In the second half, Tottenham had a good chance of their own. Adebayor just weaving inside and out through people, finding Soldado, but his shot was pretty tame, really, down straight down the middle and an easy save for the Napoli goalkeeper. Near the end, in the 68th minute, Napoli had a chance here with a great save being made by Hugo Lloris to deny Napoli a chance and a goal. And in the last few minutes of the game, Napoli had a great chance to make it 1-1 and get a point. But again, a great save from Loris. And that is how it remained here at White Hart Lane. Our final game from our match highlights of round three comes between two teams who won last time out. Valencia and Galatasaray both ex trying to extend their unbeaten runs. And it was early on, it was the Turkish side who looked very, very good money for winning this game. A great ball from Felipe Melo to find Bruma, who put a great finish into the bottom right corner of the goal with the volley. The rest of the first half was quite equal, but, in, but with about five minutes to go, just over five minutes to go in the first half, Captain Inan found a fantastic finesse shot, bang into the top right, left-hand side of the goal, and it was 2-0 and Valencia was sinking without a trace in this game and they hadn't even played too badly. The second half, the manager must have had a great chat to the players though because they came out fighting. Firstly, Pereja with a great volley into the top left corner to make it 2-1 in the 59th minute. And then... Just under 10 minutes later, in the 68th minute, a great corner and a bit of a goal mouth scramble made the ball fall to Rodrigo, who coolly finished in the bottom right hand corner of the goal. And that's how it finished, 2 all. Right, so they were all of the games from the Europe Super League for round three. I suppose you better start with our first game, AS Roma, getting an away win at Inter Milan. Uh, uh, I Love Jigsaw was the manager of Roma, sort of said after the game that he was feeling a bit fortunate that he got a good point, a good win, sorry, getting all three points. Um, what do you make of his start of the season and that result against Inter Milan? Well, I actually watched that game live as it, as it went on and I thought it was a very good game, actually. And I thought that a draw was the right result uh, for that game. I mean, both teams had plenty of chances to score goals. Um, but in the end, I think it was a case of uh, Roma just taking their chances better than Milan did and obviously getting that 2-1 victory and ma maintaining their 100% start to this season. You know, they've now got a two-point cushion at least now. So, yeah, it's a great start for Jigsaw and for AS Roma. But for Felix, I think he can take a little bit of heart from that. You know, he played a lot better there than he did in his previous game against Cornish. Uh, in the Milan derby, so he can he can look forward and, and beyond from that result, and I think the wins will start to come for him. Definitely, it's just a matter of AS Roma taking their chances at the end of the day, and that got them the win. But our second game, AC Milan also playing at home this week against Liverpool. Liverpool rounding out being three-one winners. Now I don't I know did. if you watched I this one live, but I did. did. <laughs> And this was complete Liverpool domination. And 3-1 really is doing AC Milan. It's a huge favour. Uh, that is, I mean, yeah. I it's did, not 
giving Liverpool enough justice. They dominated Indeed. the game. Well, I, I honestly couldn't believe by the time it got to the 85th minute, it was still 1-1 at that point. I thought this wasn't going to be Liverpool and XRL LGS is there. Obviously, he was the manager of Liverpool. I thought it was going to be a case of, you know, a point, well, two points dropped in that game. But he got it in the end, two, two late goals. Uh, and three more than well deserved points for him and I think that was the right result in terms of the team winning but it could have been so much more I think it could have been the best of five or even six goals for Liverpool Exactly uh, Our next game being Porto winning away against Bayer Leverkusen the new manager coming in that effect possibly having a ha- helping hand in getting a victory but it wasn't really all their own way. Bayer Leverkusen had a lot of chances in that game to at least get something out of it and were quite unfortunate with the first goal. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously me being the manager of Bayer Leverkusen. Um, I've got, I have to give credit to, to Craig Senna being the new manager of Porto. Obviously, you know, getting his you know, first game, first win away at what is, I would say, a difficult game for him. Um, I don't mean to be harsh, but I don't think it was the correct result. I mean, I think he had like four or five shots all game. And obviously that first goal being very a huge deflection, lifting it over the defence and the keeper and just going in the back of the net. Somehow that's going to be one of the flukiest goals all, all season, I think, without a doubt. And then obviously Bayer Leverkusen constantly on the attack, you know, creating chances just not finding the back of the net and in the end it was a counter attack you know very late on in the game they got Porto their second and they held on in the end yeah that's right and Tottenham Hotspur another team that are doing well now this season they're unbeaten on seven points beating Napoli who were level on points with them before the start of play this week and it was a very close game in that one Tottenham Hotspur and XRL Stuart, the manager, must be very pleased with that result because that's a very hard game to play against a team like Napoli. Definitely, yeah. I mean, yeah, three three good points there for Stuart and for Tottenham Hot. So it keeps him on, you know, you know, within the definite top half of the table, within the top four, I believe, and you know, keeps him close to Roma at the top. So you know, he needs to try and keep pace with them, and you know, getting wins week in week out will only do him it will only do him good. That's right. Uh, our next game was Everton versus St. Zenit St. Petersburg. We haven't actually got the highlights to this game. For some reason, for Alexi, the highlights didn't actually work in the end. So we, that's the only one we haven't got this week. But they ran out in the end 2-1 winners. Both teams, again, two informed sides. Both been doing well. But Everton nicking it again at home. Uh, a one-goal advantage at home has seen them climb up the league table and keep on the coattails of AS Roma at the top. Definitely, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, that is their, their second victory of the season. Um, still actually unbeaten as well, you know, drawing the other game. So, yeah, very good start for Everton and for the manager, uh, the likes to I think he'll be more than happy with the way he started this season. So, yeah, again, another team that can hang it up there with the top people. It's just a case of being consistent and, can, you know, again, can he keep these wins coming in week in, week out? Yeah, there's definitely a long way to go in this league and another 27 games. I mean, it's not going to, you know, you could have a good start and then find a few dodgy games and you're down there again. So it's definitely very, very close at the moment. But uh, our next game, Galatasaray and Valencia, two all draw in this game. Now, this was actually quite a late game to be played. Uh, This has actually literally only come in at the time of uh, recording this right now. And Galatasaray, well, they went 2-0 up in this game. Valencia got a couple of goals to get it level and get a point, and there were two really good goals in this game. Uh, going back to Galatasaray, though, winning their first two fixtures, couldn't quite manage it after being in the winning position in this game. How do you see them getting on over the rest of the season? Do you think that I thought they were flashing the pan and they're going to go off, but they seem to be playing reasonably well against most teams they're taking on at the Definitely, moment. Yeah, I mean, again, another team that's on seven points after three games. Uh, I think. Uh, See UFC Ewan, who's the uh, manager of Galatasaray again, he can take heart from his first three results. Um, probably be a little disappointed, I think, with the results tonight with Valencia. You know, having a two-goal cushion, you know, probably thinking he's cruising to another victory. But if you just let let you you know let off your guard and let it slip, you know, the other team can uh, you know can take advantage from it. And fair fair play to, to Valencia on bringing two goals back and getting probably a well-deserved point out of it, which you know will probably give them good heights. In the future games to come. 
And finally, Schalke winning at home against Sevilla. Just the one goal in this game and a very interesting penalty decision. I don't know if you watched this game live at the time. Uh, at all. I can't say I didn't, but I was told about it. Yeah, I mean, looking at... Oh, well, I think you'll see it in the highlights. It looked a dubious penalty call for Sevilla anyway, but justice was done. The penalty was missed by Backer for Sevilla. And you worry about that team. Um... They've only picked up one point so far, the same as Bayer Leverkusen, but they seem to be not getting as good. They seem to be degressing as a team. They started the season well with a decent point, but since then, two defeats, and you do worry about Sevilla a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you do. I mean, again, I think it's just the case of the manager just trying to get his team into 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 shape and just trying to get you know the right formation and to to play in, and I don't think they've perhaps quite got that together yet, which is probably why, well, not only that the... You know, not getting the results, but they're actually struggling in scoring goals. I think they've only scored two goals out of the first three games. So obviously, attacking is a problem for yeah. Sevilla, with, and Reichstag Tag being the manager, he'll have to perhaps trying to think of a new way to get more men, more men going forward. But I do see them, you know, get kicking start of their season soon. Whether or not it's going to be, if it's going to be next week, you know, next game or the game after, I don't know. But you know, it will come at some point for them. I don't think you should start worrying just yet. Right, so let's have a look at the league table. We've got AS Roma on top, the only team that have got a 100% record in this league now with a 12-goal difference as well. Really impressive there. Within second place, Tottenham Hotspur managed by Stewart. They have got seven points and with a plus six goal difference. Two other teams on seven points are Galatasaray and Everton. With on four points, a lot of teams. Valencia heading them on goal difference with Liverpool just behind them. Zenit St. Petersburg, Raul Sociedad and FC Schalke. Uh, the last two getting their wins and climbing up the league table. Napoli also actually on four points in 10th place. Porto getting their first win of the season under new manager Craig Senna. Puts himself in 11th place on three points. Also on three points is AC Milan and VFL Wolfsburg. With three teams on one point only. That's Inter Milan with XRL Fearless as manager. Writers tag Sevilla and your Bayer Leverkusen Bobbits, but the table looks very, very close, and a win will see you go up a long way in this league. So we'll be back for week four of the league with extended highlights from one of the games and the highlights from all of the other games. But until next time, we'll see you then.